In the early days of Facebook, people signed up, they didn't know where the data was going, and then people like me would essentially buy that data and say, hey, I want to focus on individuals who are in the Midwest who make right. below $40,000 and who have interest into X, Y, and Z. That's here, exactly right. Yeah, here it looks like your corporations are doing the same thing and they pay for that access with the Blue Will token, correct? Correct. And and then stuff getting, you know, like Facebook takes 100% of the earnings, right? Like, right. Uh, so, and the price spends 100% of that goes to Facebook. We users get nothing. Yeah. The difference about. between Blue Will is um, the enterprise spends the money. Blue Will only connects you. That means we take a small matching fee in between and uh, more than 90% of the money goes into your pocket. I've yeah. gone through with a couple nodes. Some are complex, some are somewhat simple, but this one, it's going to be nodes that you can download through the app and it's going to be sitting on your phone. Is that right? That That is correct. So, yes. And for, I'll be 100% transparent. I've already invested into Blue Whale. I'm a believer in what they're doing. I think they're going to do great. It's uh, just all comes down now to execution. But, all right, everybody. So what I want to do is uh, talk about uh, Blue Whale, which is a new project, uh, AI focused. And to me, I describe Blue Whale as what Facebook could have been if they were actually honest. So I brought in somebody who could help us out, Han Jin who is the co-founder and uh, CEO over at uh, Blue Whale. Welcome to the show for the first time. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. So, so Han, we do things a little bit uh, differently here. We try to break things down as simply as we possibly can. So what we're going to do today is take a look at Blue Whale and ask the question, will it make the cut? And the cut's very simple. We're going to take a look at community, utility, team, and tokenomics. Not necessarily in that order, but it just makes things a lot simpler. So... Let's start out with the very first question, which is, what is Blue Whale as far as utility? I'll go through the questions and, and you'll answer them uh, as we see fit. Uh, two is, who is Hanjin and the Blue Whale team? We'll take a look at the community, the tokenomics. And lastly, I want to make this brain that easy for everybody and actually go through the process. So the first question is, as always, what the heck does this thing do? And what is the actual utility? And I found a quote from you in one of your Medium posts. And you said, and like I talk about, you know, Facebook being uh, what, it, what it could have been, is, but it was honest. And you said, for nearly two decades, online platforms have profiled and targeted users without their consent. Companies have poured billions of dollars into Google, Facebook, TikTok, and other platforms to target and mass advertise to consumers. At Blue Whale, wallet holders can take control of their digital profile, decide if they want to receive communications while at the same time taking a majority share of the outreach spending. So instead of going into the, uh, the pockets of the advertisers, it goes to the individuals. So Blue Whale has signed up 180 companies and has indexed more than 270 million wallets. So just expand on these two points and tell us what the heck does Blue Whale do? For sure. So actually Blue Whale, we, we see as the first intelligence layer on blockchains. And uh, the go-to-market for us was to build a two-sided marketplace uh, where you have on the one side the consumer, the individual that has their own, wa uh, own wallets, and then you have enterprises on the other side. Um, I always used to make the joke, it's like Tinder matching like two sides, <laughs> uh, the enterprise with the consumer. And why are we matching them? It's because the enterprise is always looking for increasing their audiences, increasing their user base, right. uh, being able to build better products uh, for the right people. And um, the consumer, you know, like on, in this case, can uh, monetize or generate passive income from being kind of like uh, outreach to um, by, by enterprises. So Blue Well is the first intelligence layer on blockchains. Uh, we profile individual users on the blockchain that are transacting and use that information to match them to the right enterprises. Now, enterprises are always looking for finding the right audience, um, uh, building the right offerings, being connected to the right kind of like wallet holders uh, that could be long term or become long term their their user base. And so, it you know, like we literally build a two sided market that functions like Tinder, where you use AI to match both sides. That makes OK. So so that part makes sense. So we're talking about. So let's say that I am a conglomerate. I am this huge entity. And I'm like, okay, there's a ton of wallets that are out there. Like you gave the example of Ethereum. Ethereum has hundreds of thousands of wallets. And you are looking for individuals who have some type of aspect that you're looking for, either an NFT investor, either yeah. there's something that, that, that you've done with DeFi or something like that. If, That's right. How does that look like for 
the the business who is looking for those wallets and then how does the blue whale token fit into that for sure so the business itself um they probably already have certain wallets so they come to us upload those wallets so that our ai can train on it cluster it profile the users that they already have uh, for example here's a good example right like um they uploaded about 50 uh, 50 000 wallets uh, we map them out based on activity and then uh, cluster them into like different behavior patterns. Now, of course, for the enterprise, you know, they can just easily uh, step in and look at each of them individually. But um, the magic really happens if when you start clicking on one of those, um, mm -hmm. our AI goes out there and compares it with like 500 million plus index wallets that we have and, um, and see if we can find some similarity scores that can define the ones that we're pulling for you. So now on the left-hand side, you can see you know, like uh, our AI just pulled up like 20 wallets that are not your users yet. But based on their behavior, they're very close to one of the cluster audiences in your user base. I OK, so I got it. So, yeah, this is this is where it comes into that Facebook thing, because in the early days of Facebook, people signed up. They didn't know where the data was going. And then people like me would essentially buy that data and say, hey, I want to focus on individuals who are in the Midwest who make below $40,000 and who have interest into X, Y, and Z. That's here, exactly. Yeah, here it looks like your corporations are doing the same thing and they pay for that access with the Blue Will token, correct? Correct. And and then stuff getting, you know, like Facebook takes 100% of the earnings, right? Like, right. Uh, so enterprise spends 100% of that goes to Facebook. We users get nothing. Yeah. The difference about. between Blue Will is um, the enterprise spends the money Blue Will only connects you. That means we take a small matching fee in between and uh, more than 90% of the money goes into your pocket. That's Got it. Gotcha. And we're going to go over like how that works to set things up if people who are watching this video want to actually go through that. So sure. if we're going to add a couple more things to, to talk about, first of all, and we, uh, you know, we did the, the preliminary introduction as far as like who you are, but just give us a little bit of a, of a background as far as like yourself and of course the Blue Whale team, which uh, is you and Adam, but then you've got a lot of different investors as well. So how does this all And we also up? have a much larger team than, than what's uh, <laughs> displayed on our website. I can do it uh, with only two. Um, but, you know, just to give you a little bit of background, so both me and my co-founder, we have been in AI for a very long time. He did his PhD back at Stanford in 2007, a long time ago. So he said like when he graduated with an AI degree or kind of like specializing on AI, he couldn't find a job in AI mm. because there were no jobs at the time. Um, I, I did my master's at UC Berkeley uh, studying operations research. It was called IEOR, which is like industry engineering and operations research. But my specialization was primarily in algorithm writing. And I was actually one of the guys that wrote a lot of like prediction models for consumer behavior. Uh, what it means is that you can write AI models that can predict how much demand, how people make decisions. And, um, you know, like if you're, for example, introducing a new product to the world, you would actually know what kind of audience would buy it. Um, that's how I ended up um, at one of the Fortune 500 companies in the Bay Area. And I was um, the algorithm lead uh, to write forecasting models for new product introductions um, for, for a long time. Yeah, got it. All right. So that would take care of, you know, who and the Blue Whale team. And of course, well, of course, we have a lot more as far as the team goes. You guys are doing pretty, pretty good stuff. But I see a lot of your, and we didn't talk about this, but your, your investors, it is quite vast. And I see things from like Animoca Brands. I think I saw Cardano in there. I saw people from Guitar Hero. I saw people from Oculus, Meta Oculus, SBI Holdings, and a whole host of other Swiss Borg, mm -hmm. and those groups. How long have you guys been putting this together, matter of fact? Um, I mean, like, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, right. uh, for sure. I mean, uh, we have been uh, fundraising our first round, a pre-seed and seed round in the last two and a half years. So it's been a very, very long journey. And then we also went through, you know, fundraising during some of the really tough times like FTX collapse and, <laughs> and Luna collapse. So I, I think, you know, like the one thing that uh, my team did really well is like execute during tough times, uh, during bear markets, and then also being able to find the right investors that uh, believed in our vision and uh, wanted to be early and, and helping us uh, take, take the journey to the next level. Yeah, I got it. And I, I talk about this on the channel a lot. Pay attention to the companies that uh, build in the bear because they'll crush it in the bull. And if you can get through this really tragic bear market, I think you're going to do quite well. 
So we'll see how it works out. But that will lead us to our next point, which is community. Now, when we first started talking, and of course, everybody, if you haven't figured this out yet, and I'll be 100% transparent, I've already invested into Blue Whale. I'm a believer in what they're doing. I think they're going to do great. It uh, just all comes down now to execution. But your community, when we first started to talk, it was uh, quite small. And now I'm taking a look at it today. 50,000 members over on Discord. You've got over almost 300,000 on uh, X or Twitter. And then Telegram was 127,000 members. How have you guys grown so quickly? That, that, that would be the question for me. Because I, well, I know when we first talked, you're like, wow, I didn't know we even had that many people. I, I was surprised myself when you showed me the numbers. Um, you know, uh, during during the summer, especially during the summer, I think we were before the summer we were at sixty or fifty k, mm -hmm. um, especially in Telegram. And then during the summer, I thought everybody w went on vacation, right, <laughs> and stopped looking at crypto. And uh, we doubled that number within the last month or two. So um, I would say. You know, like on the one hand, our team is like very focused on the product. Uh, we want to do a great uh, or build a great product. We have um, two flywheels because we are connecting two sides, right? The enterprise side and the uh, consumer side. Now, the funny thing is like you looked at my Medium article. That was also like six months ago when we wrote it, right? So at this point, we have more than 3,000 enterprise accounts on our platform. Holy smokes. And, you know, if you look at my, my article... I don't know from when that was, uh, but uh, uh, March. There you go. Yeah. So we 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 got like you know a couple of months behind us. Uh, at that point, we were at 180, right? Yeah. And then well, on on the consumer side, you know, like we launched the consumer side only in late April this year, and then it somehow grew very very quickly from you know like just a couple hundred thousands in the first month to um, like approaching almost a mil. And so I think, you know, like uh, there is a, a magic of building a two sided market, which is really, really hard. Right? Like I right. would tell everybody, like, don't build two sided markets because you need to get both sides right. Um, but if you do, um, those two sides actually uh, pull each other up and then hopefully create that flywheel effect where both sides are feeding each other. Yeah, but it's it's going to take time. You know, it's uh, I mean, you you talked about two and a half years. I think we got a long way to go. And these are the narratives that we're looking at AI. And AI is not an overnight success story. It no. took a long time. Nvidia has been around forever, and just now everybody's starting to discover it and think that it's just so easy. If I would have gone to Nvidia, trust me, you weren't there for five seven years ago when nobody wanted to touch that as it was growing in the background. So this, I think, is the time to get in if you have that. Uh, time horizon for everybody who's watching the video, which yeah. I guess would, would lead us to, our, to our, one of our last questions is tokenomics. So mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything as far as tokenomics go. So kind of help us break that down. And actually also a quick question, TGE, the token generation event, what are we looking yeah. at and what chain are we building on? Great, a good question. So right now we are looking at Q4. Um, that's our goal for, for this year. And uh, we are, are going to be launching our token on ERC20. Um, so because like we are the strongest on Ethereum right now, we have indexed more than 500 million wallets on Ethereum that is uh, being fed or that data is being fed into our AI. And so um, it's and also it, it's it has the highest amount of liquidity. Um, it was a no brainer for us to uh, pick that first. Um, then uh, on top of that, uh, so we are currently working out the tokenomics to the last details because you know there are so many things changing at the same time but you know like to just break down some of the very high level things uh, for example we are dedicating 25 percent of our token allocation to nodes uh we are doing a node sale in the coming month or so that's going to be a limited time frame and limited quantity node sale um we believe in nodes a lot is because we are a data layer and uh, the data layer needs good data to be trained. So we don't want to feed fake data into um, our AI, right? And, and let it train on the wrong information. And so as a node, as a data verifier node, um, if we are giving people the responsibility or, or the kind of like role of helping us uh, verify and cross-reference information that com comes into the network. That's the purpose of the node. That's why we are dedicating a lot. Now on the investor side, we uh, we have sold about like I would say ten to fifteen percent um, of our tokens uh, to our investors. Actually, more. This is actually on the lower side if I compare to other companies um, that have 
uh, you know, like way larger investors or much bigger investors or much more investors than us. I think the reason for us is like we want to be decentralized as much as possible. Right. We want to avoid that we have a lot of um, like uh, selling pressure at, at TGE. And so we, uh, you know, like work with a lot of investors that are community based, that have a lot of like individuals that, that are holding our tokens. And like this, we can create the best uh, decentralization. And then on the community side, the rest is kind of like focused on community, on airdrops, mm -hmm. on, you know, like uh, how to uh, for, for, the, for the DAO that we are building. And then, of course, there's a small chunk, which is like, I think somewhere between 15 to 20 percent that's allocated to the team and the advisors that have helped the project get to this point. But as you can see, like majority of the tokens will belong to to the contributors and, and the people that are part of this journey. Right. And of course, it also comes down to emission schedules and unlocks, which we're going to take a look at right here. And that will take care of the actual tokenomics side of it. So, Han, thanks for uh, describing those types of things. So now let's go over just how this works, because I want people to understand like, OK, we talked a lot about utility. We talked about the community. We talked about the tokenomics. How does this actually function? So let's just go through that just so we can uh, make it uh, as easy as possible. So everybody, you are going to see something like this. Here's the website. Links down in the description. If you'd like to sign up, as Han was talking about, as far as like putting your wallets together, this is what allows people to find you. And uh, I, I want to remind everybody, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you need to reveal all your wallets, right? I'm sure you right. have like, uh, tens or fifties or hundreds of wallets. Um, just pick one of them and, and take that as a digital profile that, when you, uh, that you want to generate passive income from. Exactly. And if the IRS is listening, I only have this wallet. It's very small. <laughs> and we will go from there. So we'll click, right. on, we'll click on connect wallet. And we'll go with, I have a MetaMask wallet. Yes. So at this stage, I, I just want to quickly add a comment. Um, so we made it accessible, not just for people that have wallets, right? So if you have a MetaMask wallet, you connect here, no problem. Uh, but we wanted to have uh, introduced like uh, Web2 users or consumers that have never encountered with wallets by just uh, simply logging in here with an email and then creating a wallet behind the scenes. So that's, that's also possible. I see right here. Sign in with the wallet. Email address, click that, and then you can sign up behind the scenes as you guys take all the heavy lifting. I got you. Perfect. All right. So you're not going to see this, but it's going to ask me to sign something on MetaMask, and voila. Hey, there I am. Look at me. Oh, there you go. So, so it says, wow, my net worth is $3,000. It's pretty good for this wallet. Your, your score is pretty good, too. Like <laughs> My score is much lower than that. <laughs> so, hey, man, I'll take it. I got root, ETH, hypercycle, alluvium. Rad, rude. I got a lot in there. Didn't, uh, well, that's actually true. And it's some information here, which, eh, you know, I got some NFTs, Ivan Pay. I think a lot of these are unfortunately scams because that's usually what it is. Links down. Wow. I remember that one. So, right here, so I have this wallet. So, I'm just, is that pretty much it? And people can find me and they can contact me and pay me? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, seems like you opted in, which is great. Uh, you can see that on the verification check mark um, next to your uh, profile. Um, that means, like, you know, you have opted in for the fact that other people can reach out. Now, think about it this way, right? Um, on LinkedIn, uh, a lot of people get uh, a lot of inbound messages um, uh, about offerings and whatever. Now, in the Blue Whale world, you have your inbox. And each of those inbox spots can be taken by someone that messages you. Now, the person that messages you, the more people that messages you, the, the more expensive it gets. So why we created this dynamic is because we want to filter out for you who is actually serious about reaching you, right? Let's say you have 100 messages in your inbox. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, and, and LinkedIn, those right. are probably, uh, 100 uh, spam uh, mails, okay? Exactly. Oh, but, I've been there. And, and Blue Whale, um, because it gets more expensive, uh, the number 100 or number 99 is paying a lot of money to reach you. So it will definitely be with uh, the true intention of actually reaching you and, and wanting to talk to you. Got you. So when, they, so when they reach out and they say, OK, we want to pay you, and it's a, can it be whatever cryptocurrency they prefer as long as it's an ERC-20 token? No, right now it's uh, using the Blue Whale, uh, you know, in the future uh, or in the short term, it's going to be using the Blue Whale token. And uh, wow. right now it's using the Blue Whale point system uh, that is uh, established here. And so the points will go directly into your uh, kind of like 
balance and then your balance will increase from there um that makes now sense. the the interesting thing is like as as your messages start piling up right uh you will see per message more points coming into your balance versus uh you know before Gotcha. And then I know people are going to say right now, well, if it's on Ethereum and ERC-20, it's going to be super expensive to, to go that route. Is there any plans to do like a layer two solution? Is it going to yeah. be the own thing or how is this going to work? For sure. So right now we have like two or two solutions. One is ERC-20. Um, ERC-20 you only use if the person is not opt in yet in Bluewell. Um, because it's going to, yeah, you know, gas fees are uh, quite expensive. True. Now, if you're a messaging off chain uh, through the Blue Well system, it's very, very cheap because we didn't want to, you know, like increase the gas, uh, have a lot of gas uh, fees that will eat, uh, eat away from your earnings. Right. So that means like in the future, right, like adding like an Arbitrum or adding like a different layer in here, uh, layer two that accelerates and it reduces cost is, is very, very important for us. And so that more transactions can be actually driven and more communication can be driven because at the end of the day, those enterprises want to reach you with their offerings. They want to tell you about their newest games. They want to tell you about their new newest DeFi products. They want to tell you about the newest, I don't know, um, what, what social platform they, they have been building. And so um, the more transactions happen through the platform, uh, the, 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 you know, like the more value is, is being generated. Gotcha. So there it goes for the different communities and their outreaches and uh, corporations. Makes sense. Let's finish it up with this. In one of the things we just talked about, you talked about nodes. I found yeah. this interesting because I'm, um, I've gone through with a couple nodes. Some are complex, some are somewhat simple. But this one, it's going to be nodes that you can download through the app and it's going to be sitting on your phone. Is that right? That, that is correct. So for, for the uh, purpose of decentralization, we believe that, you know, a lot of the node sales that happened um, were quite centralized. That means right. like a small handful of people that uh, purchased large amounts of percentage of the node sale. And so um, we asked ourselves the question, like, why is that? And why is that such a hurdle for, for individuals to access nodes? Because who doesn't want to uh, have something that generates passive income on a daily basis, right? Right. And so our uh, analysis said that uh, downloading the software, installing it, um, figuring out how to run it on your uh, you know, desktop or something like that is, is very, very painful and requires technical expertise. Now, the way we are doing it is uh, you go into the Blue World profile. Uh, if you have bought a node during the node sale, then uh, we can identify that through your wallet, right? Because uh, your node or NFT is going to be sitting in your wallet. And then you just turn it on and literally like check in every 24 hours and you notice operating. And that's how simple the experience is going to be for, for like, you know, um, my grandma, my dog to be able to <laughs> generate passive income. Right. Okay. So, so, walk, so real quick, uh, you talked about the sales already gone through for the nodes. Can you still get a node? Uh, the sale hasn't started yet. That's okay. the beauty of it. Right. So we have started a whitelist uh, campaign right now. So if you go to our, you know, like uh, Blue Whale whitelist, um, you know, on the top, uh, you can sign up today. Right. It's very simple. And um, you can look at your ranking because uh, the higher you're ranked, uh, the, the cheaper the tier is going to be that you will be able to purchase the notes. And then um, the funny thing is uh, we created a challenge which means that um, even if you're signing up today and you're not getting into a tier one, you can move up into tier one by having uh, generating enough points by referring friends so that you still have, you know, anybody still has the chance to get uh, tier ones. I got you. So it'd be like right here under this quest button right here. No, no, no. It's, it's slurry here, right? So you go into connect wallet, uh, you go in there, um, uh, you know, let's say you, you use your MetaMask, uh, you connect it. Um, as soon as you're connected, uh, we'll allocate like a position in the whitelist for you. So, um, you know, you need to verify your email and then you are registered. Now, you know, you will see that uh, Rob will be probably registered as a, a tier two or a tier three uh, node, uh, node uh, whitelister. However, uh, it's just the beginning for Rob. He can now uh, invite after the registration, he can copy his invitation code and he can uh, send it to his friends. If all his friends register, he gets uh, points per friend he refers and he moves into tier one. 
I got you. What if you don't if you don't have a referral code, can you still register? Oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You can you you should yeah, you just register uh, and then uh, you should get an email confirmation and then the verification code is in your email right now. You t I type in your verification code and then uh, we know that you are, you know, you have real intentions to actually purchase the notes. Uh, our whitelist has grown quite a bit. Um, tier ones went out and the uh, you know was uh, was totally gone within like a couple of hours um, as soon as we launched it. And um, I do think like there's a new wave of note sale coming downstream where we want to have individuals hold notes and tap notes and operate notes um, at a click of a button or in their pockets. That's awesome. Hey, and look at this. Check this out. Five, two, two. It did come. There you go. Uh huh. Now we're talking. Verify. Perfect. Oh, I got a referral link, which I will. No, you have a referral link. I'll be putting that in um, the. You are tier two. Great. So. Oh, I got uh, tier two. Hey, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> well, Han, that was very informative. I like where things are going. Again, everybody. Everything we just talked about, there'll be links in the description and we'll follow up as you know the progress of Blue Well continues. Hanu, you have to come back and tell us where things are going. I like this narrative, I like what things are, are doing, but uh, you know, we'll see how it all works. So Han, again, thanks so much for stopping by the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun today. All right, let's jump back. So lastly, as always, we have to take a look at the pros and the cons. And this project looks pretty good, but not everything is perfect. So the things that I see, as far as the pros go, it actually solves a problem. And this problem that we talked about was the same thing that Facebook ran up against, which is essentially stealing all of our information and giving it away and giving us nothing. Now we got Facebook in there, but how many times have we actually lost all the rest of our data and everything else as they sold us to the higher bidder? So with Blue Whale, I can see how this is a net positive. Speaking of which, passive income. So if you are one of those people that want to sign up for this and go through it, there are companies that are looking for you to talk to you in the same way when I did Facebook ads, I was looking for the exact same thing. Number three, nodes are very easy to set up. I found this quite surprising that you can actually have a node running on your phone and you can actually have it as a, another form of passive income. So when this comes through, and of course we are so early for this that the uh, launch of the nodes hasn't even happened yet. If you're looking to get into node or be a node operator, and very looks like to be very simple, there'll be a link in the description for an affiliate link. And lastly, the big pro is that we are super early on this. Now, I know a lot of people have talked about the AI angle and the D-pin angle and everything else, but when we look at things to invest into, sometimes it's good just to take a look at what is the narrative and what are the big movers and shakers moving forward. So those are the four things that I see as far as pros. Now, here we go to the cons and we're early. And you look at this, you're like, why does he have that twice? It's because when you are super early, it is super risky. So I understand when we took a look at this, it looks very good. Looks like there's a lot of positivity to it. But just remember, when you're very this early into a project, there are substantial risks to take into account. And then also, can Bluewell execute their plan? Now, this is important to understand because there are a lot of working cogs in the background, especially for what they're trying to do. So can they execute? And this is good number three is, can they bring in more companies that want to come in and share the vision? Look, YouTube wouldn't be where it is. Facebook wouldn't be where it is. Instagram, all the different social platforms would not be where they are unless they had eyeballs watching them. So it's the same thing here. Unless they can bring in people and companies to uh, as like a synergistic type of effect, like what Han was talking about, those two different uh, aspects, it can't work. And then lastly, all investments carry risk. And I wanted to remind this to everybody because things are risky. However, with some of the big risk comes great rewards. Now, I can't tell you this is going to the moon or gonna be great because nobody knows for sure. I'm just bringing this information to you because I'm an investor and I thought it was a, uh, a reasonable, good company. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up instead of subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for coming by and we'll see you on the next one.